that's not good. Ready? One, two, three. Welcome, welcome to iHip News, where Pumps and I share our opinion about the news that is important to us. And before we go any further, I would officially like to offer an apology to any normal blue voters in the district of Marjorie Taylor Greene. I owe you an apology. I uh, bashed the entire district, which right. is not fair because we live in a red state. So we understand what that feels like. I love you guys. Keep fighting the good fight. I also need to issue a second apology to all of the boomers. Boomers have done a lot of great things. I need to not be such a bitch about it. And so specifically, since Pumps is so much older than me, Pumps, I officially apologize to you. Thank you. We can just call this episode your apology tour. <laughs> All right. Here's the deal. One of my favorite case studies, aside from Donald Trump, is, of course, the Speaker of the House who has constant conversations with God. Right. Wherein God told him he was Moses. Right. And he said that out loud in front of cameras and it's recorded. <laughs> like he lacked the self-awareness to know that sounds crazy. Right. So we're talking about Moses Mike Johnson. And just to take a little stroll down memory lane, I want to remind you guys that he also said while cameras were rolling that he and his son monitor each other's Internet use through a program called Covenant Eyes, which, of course, is to watch for image search of private parts right. and porn. So, Seth, please play this tape. Um, it, it scans. You, you obviously opt into it, but it scans every all the activity on your phone or your devices, your laptop, tablet, what have you. We do all of it. And then it sends a report to your accountability partner. So <laughs> my accountability partner right now is Jack, my son, right? And so he's 17. So he and I get a report of all the things that are on our phones or all of our devices once a week. If anything objectionable comes up, your accountability partner gets an immediate notice. I'm proud to tell you my son has he's got a clean slate, all right? Yeah. But <laughs> Okay. There's so many things wrong with that. Okay. Aside from that being toxic. Right. How humiliating for his son that that his dad's up there talking about his clean bill of health <laughs> on his Internet searches. Here's the deal. I think your kid's a dork if they've never looked up porn. I was going to say when he was saying all that, I thought the kid's got to have a burner phone, a computer, an iPad, something. Because at 17 years old, like you said, it would be odd if they've never looked up tits and ass. A hundred percent. I mean, that's just like, of course, you you know, there's a, a fine line, but it sure. would be weird if if the child didn't pursue looking at pictures of naked people for the purposes of masturbating, which I'm probably sure that Moses Mike thinks is a sin and that people will burn in hell for that. But here's what's so interesting about Moses Mike. So he's all chips in here on no porn. Right. Right. And I want to remind everybody that he's also all chips in on his daughter maintaining her virginity. He placed a ring on his daughter's finger that said, you're mine. Mm -hmm. Your virginity is mine, too. We're going to a purity ball. And then this ring can be replaced when I pass you on to your husband. So he's anti-porn, anti-premarital sex. So where would a person go that opposes pornography? In premarital sex, where would they go, Pumps? Well, I would think where they wouldn't go would be Mar-a-Lago. Interesting. So he heads down to Mar-a-Lago, where we have the former president, Donald Trump, who um, had sex with a porn star right. while he was married, also a Playboy bunny while he was married, and I'm sure many other people that just are too embarrassed to admit it. Right. And just this is an aside. I don't have any issue with um, uh, short people, but I just want to point out the height disparity between uh, Moses Mike and DJT. He looks like he might be a little child that he's going to put on his hip any 
minute. But I mean, he's so longingly, longingly looking at Donald Trump, who's Mr. Porn, Mr. Playboy, Mr. Sex Outside of Marriage. And he just does not see the oxymoron there. He can't wait to get down there and kiss the ring. This is what the modern day Republican Party is all about. It's all about saying one thing right, and then going down to this man who is a career c- criminal who sleeps with porn stars while he's married, is not even religious, and this weird braiding and marriage of these people who claim moral superiority about stupid shit, about premarital sex, not looking at porn, nothing that really advances people or helps people suffering of people, just this bullshit Puritan stuff. That's what Moses Mike is all about. And then he's bedfellows with Donald J. Trump. It's fascinating to me how many millions of people let this hypocrisy go unchecked. They don't even realize how hypocritical it is. I mean, this is the party of book banning because there's too much, quote unquote, porn in libraries. They want to release the January 6th hostages who were criminals, people died, and they took shits in the Capitol. But they want to release (laughs) them and then say their law and order while their ruler has 88 felony counts against him. And like you said, it's premarital sex, it's porn stars, it's crimes, and they claim the moral high ground. It is so, the hypocrisy is so thick, you cannot breathe. There is no group of people more hypocritical mm-hmm. in the United States of America than evangelical Christians. They win. They are the biggest hypocrites. They don't give a shit about human suffering. All they care about is capitalism, controlling marginalized groups, and whacking off to Donald Trump. That's right. That's the list. That's all they care about. But our subconscious, as studied by Sigmund Freud, is a very difficult thing to escape. And the Midas touch caught a little Freudian slip from Moses Mike when he was down at Mar-a-Lago. And let's have Seth play this. Everybody from around the world to come here, including hardened criminals, including hardened criminals, hardened criminals, hardened criminals. Shout out to Ben and his brothers. That is so good. That is so good. I mean, and I mean, that's just that is a, what you call a Freudian slip right. right there. You know what amazes me about this big pilgrimage to Mar-a-Lago where we're going to talk about election integrity. Okay, first of all, Magic Mike or Moses Mike was all for not counting the votes of the 2020 election because he wanted his boyfriend Donald Trump to win. Trump could give two shits about election integrity. He was at three o'clock in the morning on the election in 2020 saying, stop the vote counting. <laughs> I mean, let's not forget the greatest hits of what was going on well, there. Well, it depended on which venue it was. Right. But Some he said count the votes and other where he was behind and where he was ahead, he said stop the vote. Right. So it was mixed messaging across the board, cherry pick to suit his own personal outcome. Right. And the, the thing is, is he makes the pilgrimage. They give this press conference because illegal aliens are voting. OK, here's the deal, guys. Unless you're a U.S. citizen, you're not qualified to vote. That's the law. So this whole thing was just theater because there has been a law on the books for 25 years that says you must have citizenship to vote. You either have to have a driver's license, a social security number. Like this is not new legislation. They're not reinventing the wheel. They're just highlighting complete fucking bullshit. Because it gives them airtime and it makes them feel good about being mean to marginalized people. Furthermore, Moses Mike's pilgrimage to Mar-a-Lago the weekend before his criminal trial starts in New York. Everybody says that this trial is about hush money. This trial is more so about election interference. That's right. And he, Moses Mike, and the former president stood there and spoke about election integrity. 48 hours before 
Donald Trump has to go face trial for falsifying business records so that he could cover up the fact that he slept with a porn star and paid her off so that he could interfere in the election with that information not coming to fruition. This is it's just bullshit. And I just can't believe that millions of people hear them say whatever they want and they just believe it. There's no critical thinking whatsoever. Zero. And they are so judgmental, these people, about gay people, about black and brown people, yet they claim, oh, we love Jesus, right? God, Jesus, God, Jesus is so great. Fuck the immigrants. Yeah, Donald Trump can grab him by the pussy. It is just such breathtaking hypocrisy. In my opinion, evangelical Christianity is a mass digital cult operating in all 50 states of the United States, and they are the most dangerous unchecked group because you have Trump and his sycophants that surround him. But who votes them all in by over 90 percent? The evangelicals. I've had it. I've had it up to my eyeballs with the evangelicals. Yeah. The hypocrisy and the moral high ground that they claim is absolutely appalling in every single way. Mm -hmm. All right. Then after Moses Mike's pilgrimage, to make a complete mockery of himself, he just all he all the all the speaker is capable of doing is just embarrassing himself. That's right. Trump goes to New York and then he appears in court. Seth, show the photograph. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I don't know if he has pink eye. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's just interesting to me that you're a billionaire, right? Allegedly. You say you're a billionaire. Hire a fucking makeup artist. You look like dog shit. And you could say, oh, well, he's tired. Well, he is tired because he's up all night ranting and raving on True Social. Twice in court, he fell asleep. Like, did the whole head nod, mouth open. I mean, this is a guy you want to be in charge of the nuclear codes? He can't even put on his makeup right. They browbeat gay people and drag queens. Here's your drag king right here. <laughs> right here. I mean, that's offensive to drag queens, so it I is. apologize. But uh, I think you were reading uh, some uh, screenshots from Truth Social, and he's really upset about potentially missing Barron's graduation. Well, here's the deal. Yesterday in court, there was a date that his attorneys asked that they are not have court because of... Trump's youngest son graduation. And he said, depends on where we are, are in the trial. Are we behind? Are we ahead? We'll just have to make that determination. So no, no determination has been made yet. Yet Donald Trump goes out and is screaming, oh, he won't let me off to go to Barron's graduation. Motherfucker didn't go to Don Jr.'s graduation. He didn't go to Eric's graduation. He didn't go to Ivanka's graduation. He didn't go to Tiffany's graduation. He could give two shits about Barron's graduation. He wants to just delay the trial. And I just, I mean, a little tip, if we could turn back time, we might could say, if you weren't fucking a porn star and when Barron was newly born and then trying to cover it up so you could interfere with the 2016 election, you could go to Barron's election all day long, twice on Sunday. Motherfucker wouldn't go to Barron's graduation if he didn't have court. <laughs> I mean, he, he's just a, he is just a zit on the ass of humanity. I love, he is. He totally is. And again, we talk about him and then we talk about his enablers in Congress. Absolutely. But how did they all get there? They got there by large part the evangelical vote. They have courted the evangelicals. They have cultivated right-wing politics with evangelical Christianity. These are the people that have these groups where all the men can go pray together. Right. Because that's what men need in America, more support. That's right. And Especially white men. And that's that's what the group is. It's all of these white men led by these mega church pastors and people like Josh Hawley that go to these white men prayer groups. And it's like, we're the million man march and we're this. It's just such bullshit. It's performative bullshit. And they think that they should be the leaders of everything, particularly the home. Well, of course, because their wife should be submissive. But these this evangelical vote is something that doesn't get called out often. It's just referred to as the evangelical vote. Right. 
These people are hypocrites. They uh, do not believe in equality. They do not believe in the Constitution. They want to blend church and state together. They want no separation. These are the people that have gay kids, that have trans kids. These are the people that browbeat their children for being born to them. Right. I mean, th these are these are not the kindest, best group of human beings. And I'm going to say, and I said it earlier, I think it is a cult that constantly goes unchecked. And you will remember last week in the news, we talked about Arizona and what happened where they cite a law from 1864. Let me play for you and the viewer the shit show that was going on on the floor of the uh, Arizona Congress. Let it be so, Lord God. Let it be so. That's just fucking crazy. They're sitting there speaking in tongues. And I guarantee you, every single one of them attends a mega church with a big screen, with a sleek pastor, with the mic, you know, that's like this. We can walk around in his jeans and his designer tennis shoes. I've had it up to my eyeballs because it is a total grift set up for profit that gets people like this that are fear mongered into, into this, that they believe that running around the United States, there is a group of demons and a group of angels that are invisible fighting for you to make, make a good decision or a bad decision at all times. That is fucking crazy. It is not objective. It is not the truth. It is batshit crazy. And these People vote. And I think we can call out the politician. We can call out all of the enabling politicians that were equally elected around them. But what the fuck is this shit? And it's everywhere. And this is a huge voting block of people that have black and white thinking, that are incapable of thinking critically, that are so judgmental. Mm -hmm. They are so codependent. They think who people sleep with is their business. What clothes people wear is their business. What restrooms people use is their business. What other people's kids read in school is their business. This is codependency, cult, city. I have had it up to my eyeballs. I think that the conversation needs to start calling out these mega churches that grift these people, fear monger, they emotionally blackmail them, they scare the shit out of them, out of them from birth on. This is the indoctrination in which they talk about. This is it. All of these people were deeply indoctrinated to not think critically. They were deeply indoctrinated to judge premarital sex. Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? And why is their judgment and their religion superior to everyone else's religion and judgment? Because they think that their book has told them that this is what they have to do. They have to believe it 100%, everything in it, including the Noah's Ark tell and all that other crazy shit. And they're told that if they don't believe it, it's blasphemy and they're going to burn in hell forever. And they started at a very young age. So all of this conversation from Moses Mike and all the other Christian nationalists about the woke left is trying to um, indoctrinate your kids. No. They're trying to educate your kids to think critically. The indoctrination is in these mega churches and this far right Christianity. That's the indoctrination. And people really suffer from this type of upbringing. It, 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 it's a lifelong struggle for people to get out of that type of thinking that maybe they're they're bad for beating off or having premarital sex or being gay or that their parents aren't going to love them because they're being who they actually are. None of that shit matters. But to them, all of those surface little issues are far more important than helping people at the border. They want to criminalize the people at the border. They want to shame women that go to the doctor that have been raped Whatever they, whatever path that woman chooses, they want to shame her. They want to incarcerate her. These are cruel people right. that say, oh, I love Jesus. 
I, oh no, I don't judge. I love Jesus. My Lord and Savior doesn't judge. Bullshit. It's time to start calling out these fuckers because this is the problem. These are the people that get these nuts elected. And I've had it up to my eyeballs. And all of these roads lead to, bizarrely, bizarrely, their leader is the porn star fucker. Right. The porn star fucker, the uh, out of marriage fucker, the liar. I mean, just lie, lie, lie. The criminal, just he is a walking crime spree. Grab him by the pussy. That's their leader. And they just do not see the hypocrisy in it. But here's the deal. Their their megachurch pastors are every bit the grifter and the liar that Donald Trump is. They are every bit that. They just, they're better liars than Donald Trump is. Right. He's just because they smart. do it from a pulpit. And so the, all the people that attend these churches are like, oh, our pastor's so great. And I'm like, your pastor is a criminal grifter. And it's legal because we have a separation of church and state, but they have political agendas from the pulpit. And over 90% of evangelicals vote for this shit. Right. And they, it is a huge voting block. And until we start regulating this, when you, when churches are for profit and churches have a political agenda, that is outside of separation of church and state. But nobody will touch it. But it, I think it's time that we start touching this because this is handmade tale shit. And oh, they're absolutely. growing and they indoctrinate these people super young. We live in Oklahoma. There are these mega churches all over the place. And I just know for a fact when I meet somebody and they say they go to a mega church, I know the exact type of person I'm dealing with. Surface kind, right under the surface, homophobic, racist, xenophobic, judgmental, and really toxic, codependent, can't mind their own business. I know immediately. (laughs) Fucks around on the wife. Wife fucks around on him. Wife's probably fucking the trainer, snorting Xanax. 10 times out of 10. (laughs) I've had it. (laughs) Sorry, that tickled me. Snorting Xanax. Snorting Xanax. (laughs) Well, I agree. It's dangerous. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing that Mike Johnson's the Speaker of the House. It is embarrassing that Donald Trump is running for the third time to be President of the United States and that people are voting for him by the tens of millions. It is embarrassing that women do not have bodily autonomy. It is embarrassing that they're banning books. It is embarrassing they're separating children from their parents at the border. It is embarrassing that the former president is sitting there on trial for banging out a porn star and then trying to hide it and false. I mean, motherfucker's so cheap. He couldn't just pay it. He had to like falsify documents to pay it. It's embarrassing they're talking in tongues on the state house of, <laughs> of Arizona. I mean, it's just all just fucking embarrassing. Yeah. There's is. just no other word for it. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. And if you track the entire thing back, all of this starts with far right, yep, Christianity, mega church culture. That's where it starts. They started it decades ago, and this is their end result. And so you can't, we can no longer just call out the politicians and Donald Trump. We need to call out the entire group collectively for any Republicans that are clinging on to, I'm fiscally conservative. That is over. Donald, there's nothing fiscally conservative, nor is there anything conservative about Donald Trump. It's all fascism. Absolutely. All right, that's it. Stick with us for more hot takes. Pumps tell them. We will see you when we feel like it. It's so.